cancel culture is huge. A little too big in my opinion, and that's a whole different conversation that you're probably not ready for. I mean, don't get me wrong. People like R. Kelly deserve to be canceled, but most people aren't doing things that bad. If someone is genuinely sorry and actively showcasing that they've learned the error of their ways, then you should probably let it go. Y'all seem to understand the concept of character development when you watch movies, anime, read books, and play video games, but you don't seem to understand that it's a real thing in real life. But hey, what do I know? I'm just some light-skinned Saiyan who looks like Drake on the internet. What I do know is that the one man who managed to defeat cancel culture is Miami's number one Middle Eastern DJ who loves to post himself working out, but he hasn't lost a single pound. Of course I'm talking about DJ Khaled. See, y'all must have forgot, but I'm petty, I, I didn't. We the best, who? We, nigga, we the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but my videos aren't monetized at this moment, so I'm absolutely going to get that joke off because I don't have to worry about copyright right now. Also, shame on all the black people who were in the video bouncing in the background while he was dropping in bombs. That moment in rap history had me more lost than his big ass when he was lost at sea for eight hours. The key is not to drive your jet ski in the dark. This is against the law, not even just that. This ain't right. Thank God Khaled managed to find his way back to shore because he was able to release his latest offering, God Did, which is ironic because this album feels like it's far from a blessing. What the hell? Don't get me wrong, Khaled has brought his popular anthems such as We Taking Over, I'm So Hood, All I Do Is Win, Major Bag Alert, Holy Key, and I'm The One, but I just named six songs off the top of my head and I'm sure there's a few more that I've missed, but that's still not a lot considering that he's dropped 12 albums since his first release in 2007. Matter of fact, I went back and I skimmed through his discography and I just, I couldn't do it. I was like, man, I, I don't wanna hear this mess. It feels so forced. Each album has three singles max that carry the album and the rest is just a bunch of fluff with a bunch of rappers all over the beats. There's no thought process behind his albums. There's no flow to it, no concept, no nothing. It's clearly just him utilizing his relationships with hip hop's royalty to get their name on his album, which sparks interest before the release. When the track list leaks online and listeners see he's got heavyweights like Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Eminem, Lil Baby, 21 Savage, Future, SZA, and more on the album, people are more inclined to give it a shot. I'm guilty of falling for this marketing ploy myself. The good news is I think I found the reason as to why his project has no continuity to it. It's because he provides no guidance or insight into the direction he wants to build his music brand. At most, this dude is just picking the beat. His main goal is to maintain his industry relationships by any means necessary. Don't believe me? Look at this. He recently did an interview where he confessed to letting Drake do whatever he wants on the tracks. He says he doesn't ask him to change anything about his verses because he likes what Drake likes. This is problematic because the music suffers. I get it, you don't wanna step on people's toes, but you can provide criticism without being rude. It's called constructive criticism. I think this album would have benefited from him being a little bit more hands-on. Not to mention, it doesn't benefit the artist he's working with. When you're afraid to tell someone they could do better, they start to believe they own hype and they can become complacent. That's how we end up getting albums like Honestly Nevermind, which is an album I covered in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Bottom line is, a good friend challenges their friends to become better. Rant over. Now let's talk about Major Key. I mean suffering from success. Ah, I mean God did. My fault, y'all. It's so easy to confuse all his albums seeing as they all sound the same. Seriously, God did. I don't like the name of this project. I'm tired of artists like Khaled, Kanye, and Fabio Forn using God's name so loosely in their ultra demonic secular music. It's starting to make me think that all these Illuminati channels are right with their conspiracy theories on the open mockery of religion and music, and that's coming from someone who really ain't the religious type. God did is an 18 song album that overstays its welcome. Y'all know I hate long albums and this one feels especially long because of the amount of features and the lack of quality control. There are multiple songs on this album with five artists on a single track. A lot of these songs would have benefited with a more focused direction. There's no reason to have more than two artists on a single song. Three max! I think each record would have had more heart in them because of that versus sounding like everyone's just trying to do Khaled a favor by hopping on a song. Of the 18, there are six and a half songs that I liked, but only two made my playlist, so it's safe to say I liked four and a half songs and I love too. Now if you're wondering why I included a half, it's because I like the intro song No Secret with Drake. It's definitely a vibe that kicks off the album right, but the problem is it's only 47 seconds long. I don't know why they didn't flesh this one out more. The other songs that I enjoyed, that includes God Did, Keep Going, Party, Staying Alive, Fam Good, We Good, and Bills Paid. Staying Alive is the lead single, and I'm pretty sure that song takes influence from the BG song with the same name. I could be wrong, but it doesn't sound like they sampled the song, but you can def hear Drake's cadence 
drawing inspiration from that 70s classic. There's a music video for this one, so I won't spend too much time on that song. What I'd prefer to talk about is my love for the song Party, and it's because it sampled one of my favorite guilty pleasures produced by Rick James. I'm talking about Eddie Murphy's 1985 single, Party All The Time. If you don't know about this song, please pause this video and search Eddie Murphy Party All The Time on YouTube. See, when Eddie wasn't telling jokes with that tight ass red suit, he made a short attempt at a pop career, and honestly, it wasn't bad. They don't even attempt to hide or flip the sample on this one. Khaled just threw some 808s on the song and let Quavo and Takeoff ride the beat. And I'm not gonna lie, this joint is hard. I had to add it to the playlist. Keep Going sounds like a throwaway drill song from a Dirk album. I liked it, but it wasn't anything to phone home about. Bill's Pay is one of the few songs designed to cater to the female audience. It features Lotto and the City Girls, so expect a lot of generic boss chick talk as well as references to their reproductive organs. Honestly, I'm only giving this song a pass because the beat is fire. It carries them in my opinion. If the beat sounds familiar, it's because you've heard it before. Bill's Paid samples Eddie Kendrick's 1973 record Keep On Trucking. If you haven't heard that song, I'm sure you've heard the same sample on songs such as Lights, Camera, Action by Mr. Cheeks or Do It Well by Jennifer Lopez. It's a very familiar sound and an easy way to win listeners over via familiarity. Do I love Bills Paid? No, but if someone put it on in the car, I wouldn't tell you to shut it off, so I guess that's something. Now, most would agree that the highlight of this album is track two, titled God Did. I think that's one of the reasons why this album feels so long to listen to, because the best song is the second one. After that, it kind of just slows down. But anyway, the instrumental's fire. Sounds like something that would be on a Rick Ross album. Ross was solid with his verse. Wayne dropped his annual decent verse. But Jay-Z, without a doubt, outshined everyone on this song. I ain't gonna hold you. I was hitting the jump rope in the gym when I first heard this song and when Hove said, Hove is a real ninja's dream. Hove's goal is to make a real ninja feel seen. I felt that in my sophisticatedly ignorant heart. This man said, we the corner boys with the corner office. That man just got a way of transporting you back to the stove. His verse, it was noticed to be longer than everyone else's and he, he did it so effortlessly by the way. God Did is a playlist song and it made me crave a new Jay-Z album. I was like, God damn, the streets need another one. But sadly, this album is not suffering from success as a whole. Like I stated earlier, there's 18 tracks here and I only like six. So allow me to summarize the other 67% of this album. Use this gospel, yeah. big time, yeah. beautiful, yeah. it ain't safe, yeah. let's pray, yeah. way past luck. Yeah. These streets know my name, yeah. Juice World did, yeah. grateful, mm. you're welcome. I just saved you a bunch of time. Now there's two more tracks that I didn't mention and that's because they're interludes. That's track 16 and 17, Cloth Talk and Jada Kiss's interlude. Having two interludes go back to back is a prime example of the album having no flow to it. Why would you put an interlude at track 16 of 18? To add insult to injury, Jada Kiss's interlude is pretty fire. He's doing what Jada Kiss does, which is gliding on the beat. The song even samples his iconic I'm outside versus moment against the dip set. The problem is half the song is that sample the other half is just one verse it was a fire verse but it was just one they should have made this a full-blown song seeing as it's better than half of this album i just don't understand the judgment behind the production of god did is this the worst album i've ever heard no i'd say give it one listen and just skim through the track list to find the singles that you like there's a few bangers on here to add to your workout playlist but don't feel the need to really sit down and deep dive into this unorganized mess truthfully it's crazy to think that this man has dropped 12 albums over the last 15 years and not any one of them is anywhere near a classic. This is especially crazy considering the fact that his albums consist of the biggest artists in the game at the time of each project's release. That star power alone should carry these albums, but it never does. This man basically collects all the infinity stones only to realize that he doesn't have the coordination to snap his fingers and cause a blip. But hey, I'm just saying. 